This is Rebecca from Papa Tree de Schwa, and welcome to File Folder Friday. Um, I have uh, decided to uh, retire the playlist of Freelance Friday. Um, um, I started that to do some of my own things, but found that it was actually putting more pressure on me and not less as far as projects go. So, and I also found that. I'm not doing near as much with file folders, and I have a stack like two feet tall. Um, and so I wanted to get back to that. So file folder starts with an F, so, and Friday starts with an F. So um, we're going to be doing uh, uh, projects with file folders um, on Fridays now. So, um, so this is a little thing that I started um back in the summer late summer and uh what i did was i just uh put some coffee stain on a cut down file folder that i folded in half um dunked it in some coffee and um just started playing with it really i found this little image in um a magazine and it had that underneath um, I took that little frame and cut it out and painted it with uh, some metallic uh, paint, I think maybe a bronze, and uh, it's got a little piece of um, acetate over it. I put this um, piece of dictionary page down which says document, because uh, I was going for a document holder. Um, I made this little stamp, I printed a bunch of uh, numbers out on uh, from my Google Drive, put that little thing down on it. So that's what I, that's all I had on the outside up until um, this afternoon. Then on the inside, what I had was I had these two pieces of a, um, a map. Um, this one England, this one France. That uh, I think I tore out of a magazine maybe. And then I had these little things. Um, that I had cut out of some scrapbook paper that this was just the the sheets uh, it's like an eight eight on a 12 by 12 sheet and this is half of it or thereabouts and so I just put these um, two little pockets here at the bottom with these little sheets in and that's all I had done like I said up until this afternoon um, this is, is uh, kind of venturing into new territory, um, but yet I love the look and I love the, the, the idea of building these things. So um, I'm not trying to replicate anything in, you know, actual history. I just did what uh, uh, I sort of had a theme going with the maps and with these little things of uh, some sort of travel or at least um, uh, something map-like. Uh, so what I did was I just sort of played on that a little bit. Um, I have this stamp. Uh, um, this one says Hong Kong with a number. This one um, has March 29th, 1962, with a little stamp, um, a compass here, and then I have some little coin envelopes that I made up um, a long time ago, just some extras. Um, this is a just a piece of um, like a newspaper uh, tissue that I stuck to the back of the craft paper. I, dyed, I coffee dyed the front but I forgot to do the back. Anyway I just I, and I also put this stamp on it and I used my coffee ink on it. Uh, 
and then there was a piece that kind of rubbed out here so I just uh, put coffee ink on it to make it look like a uh, a hole in the paper which it actually is a hole in the paper so um, so put that there and then on the inside is a painted dictionary page I forget what color I use but it, um, it looks dirty but it's actually paint and then the back sides plain and uh, so there's that and I just um, this is just a paper clip that I um, put some metallic paint on, two layers of paint, and heated it with the iron in between, so it just makes it grungy. And then here's another. This is is a dictionary page as well, but it was the um, in paper, and I wadded it up. Um, this and this paper as well as the corner envelope and this I did a long time ago just playing around with different uh, watercolors this was and uh, and other stuff like that and then this is another sheet or a piece of the same sheet of this tissue um, that's just uh, got the craft paper on the back and then I had this little stamp with the little worlds on it. And then on the back, um, I have a very long stamp. Now, because um, I soaked this in coffee and maybe tea as well. Like I said, it's been several months since I started this. But um, but it all didn't come down because the the paper is a little bit wavy, which actually lends itself to the the aged look of it a little bit but for this one and this one oh and then I have one on the front of this that shows like a town with the ruler at the bottom this is a stamp also um I used and this one these I use black um ink but this one I use my coffee ink so um so what I want to make is another thing similar to this. I'm not trying, like I said, I'm not trying to make a an actual um, replication of a document from history or anything like that. I'm just sort of uh, putting things together in sort of a theme. Uh, and this one is uh, uh, maybe not travel in the sense of going somewhere, but maybe just locations of uh, maybe somewhere she had been. I don't know. But um, this is a little bit longer process than some of the stuff I've been doing. So um, the video will be broken up into portions. It'll all be one video, but it'll be different portions. So, um, Earlier tonight, uh, I found this picture uh, in the public domain and um, edited it uh, to uh, get a clearer picture and uh, lighten it up a little bit and run it through my printer um, on the draft uh, setting so that it just don't print it as if it were a photo, it prints it as if it were a document really, so it gives it some lines and stuff. So it makes it look a little older than uh, than it already does. So I printed it on um, uh, this semi-glossy photo paper because it's all that I have. That's eight and a half by 11. I think I have some little bitty stuff, but I don't use that, but anyway, um, I'll rough this up with some sandpaper when I get ready to use it, but um, but this gentleman is going to be on the cover of the one that we do. So um, so this is uh, going to be the project, just something simple like this as a, uh, a document holder. And I don't know if I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll probably make similar pockets, and I might actually put more pockets. Uh, since I'm a little bit more confident now of uh, what I'm doing and how I'm going to do it. So um, that's the start. 
of this project and um, I will get some materials together and we'll get this thing started. So I went ahead and cut out the, the gentleman and uh, scratched it up a little bit to uh, give it a little bit more of an aged look. And I might actually put a little coffee over it and fill in the gaps uh, to get the white out of it. Not made up my mind about that part, but anyway, i um, done that and I've gone ahead and cut down my um, file folder. It's uh, eight and a half inches uh, tall and five and a half inches uh, folded uh, one way. Now what you see on here, this is my, my tub that I do all my inking and baths and whatnot just to contain the liquid. But um, this is um, uh, crumbles of um, instant coffee. And then this is my coffee ink. Now I've not done this before. Uh, but I do know that when I used uh, the water bath with um, the dry crystals of the instant coffee it uh, it's what puts the dark spots on so I'm going to try it with this and see what happens so see if it'll darken it up let's see what it does do and um, well, this coffee's gotten this is sat for well the last time I used it was when I made a, the video back in September maybe about the alcohol ink so I've not used it since so it's like looks like it's gotten a lot darker now I'm going to flip this over and I'm just going to spray the inside I hope this mist is not going up and getting on the camera lens that would be awful now I did ink the edges of this um, before I started but I don't think that matters now it's getting okay now I'm going to turn it back over and just see what these little things look like There's a few places that are not saturated. So I'm gonna go through here and squirt them really well. And just see these little white spots here and there. But it looks like it's getting saturated really well. Okay, let's see what this does. Oh yeah, look at that. I like how that's looking. Now, I'm going to turn it over. And do it from this side a little bit. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. So that for now I'm going to lay it out and let it dry, which will probably take a little while. Turn this back over and see what this side looks like. I think I'll spray it again. It kind of started running. I want to keep that um, congealed look. Okay, I've done just a few things off camera. Um, I finished the uh, folder so this is what it looks like dry this is the outside and this is the front and this is the inside and then I just um, uh, coffee dyed a few pieces to make pockets with that I'll do a little bit later um, but the next thing I want to do is cut out this little um, inside piece to put the picture onto. And so uh, that is the next port of call, as they say. And 
I'm going to cut it right up to the corner without quite cutting the corner and I'll do that um, when I'm done so that I can get in a little closer and actually see a little bit better what I'm doing. Okay, let's see how much we've got here. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Pop that loose, pop that loose, and pop that loose. I'm going to throw it in the coffee bath, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I'm going to go into the next step. I've got coffee all over my fingers. Um, I have decided that this man is going to be a musician. Um, the other lady was a world traveler, but uh, this man's going to be a musician. So I'm uh, just finding some papers that uh, I can use to put on the front that is uh, musician-y, <laughs> if that's even a word. Uh, I'm sure it's not a word. Um, Alright. So let me do a little bit of inking. Now these are actual coffee spots that I dripped on here when I first got this page a while back. Um, I think it was one of the very first pieces of music that I got. I think I got it in a swap. And it was just the one sheet, or maybe even not a full sheet. Anyway, I dripped coffee on it when I was looking through the stuff. So that's legit, <laughs> or legit. It's not. Uh, it's not ink. It's. Uh, it's the real thing. Okay. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of marker over it just to give it just a little bit of something extra. These fibers on the bottom of this felt pad have got so worn and stretched out that it just makes good texture. Okay. Now for this I am going to use my um, glue stick and my little pad thing here so I don't get glue everywhere. So I did a craft um, session with my daughter this morning. Uh, she lives in Indiana and back in the summer we crafted almost every day for about six weeks and um, she was between jobs and so when she went back to work I think in July maybe uh, we didn't get to craft any so today is the first time since then that we got to craft. I think I cut that just a little, or tore it a little too wide. Unless I wrap it around, but that's not near enough to wrap around. So, let's see if it will tear. It's got a little bit of glue on it, but... Let's see what we can do with that little bit. Yes, that'll work. That will be just fine. Just 
curve that over that spine just a tiny bit and it'll work so um, so yeah we made a, a project from a video online from a, a person we both just love and uh, always has really good one sheet wonder slash 12 by 12 sheet projects so we did that and it went kind of faster than we thought so then uh, we did uh, my tag along Tuesday from three weeks ago um, which she loved so that was good um, so we've got uh, now next Tuesday so a week from yesterday to uh, to uh, craft some more. All right, I'm gonna leave this part blank for now. Yuck. Um, because I want to put his picture up here, but I want to put some stamping and stuff, and I don't want to do anything else until um, I get that picture on here. But what I do want to do is make some pockets for this bottom and I'm going to make them in the same way that I did um, on the other one so I was thinking this was five and a half but it's not it's only four and a half and barely that so it's the mark under four and a half is the width here, and I guess I need a paper cutter. Uh, I do not like this paper cutter at all. Um, I'm going to be getting me another one very soon. I have several getting um, paper cutters, but they're just... I don't know, I have, um, I have a hard time with them for some reason. Not sure, and I went with my glue, or my, not my glue, but my, uh, glue stick. Um, you probably wouldn't know this. Because I try to keep everything uh, sort of uh, contained, but I actually craft this particular little uh, craft station is on top of my dryer um, because it lets me set up the lights the way that I need to and and uh, and everything. So uh, so that's where this is. I think I'm gonna make these tags. Well, two and a half is quite. Let's do two for the very bottom, and two and a half. My goodness, that's right on it, isn't it? If I cut that, it's just going to push it down into the groove. It's not going to cut it, but I'm going to try it anyway. It did it. I don't believe it. Well, it sort of did it. I put everything up before I started filming and now because I've crafted all day or most of the day and uh, okay so that's two pockets for one side and let's do this two inch one here Is this going to be two and a half? Whoa. Yay. 
All right. Okay. Grab my one and a half inch circle punch and I am going to find my middles and I do like having them pretty much exact. Sometimes it's funny on things like this it's hard to eyeball but if there's a pattern like a more of a um, uh, a pattern that's um, what's the word I'm looking for spaced out I can usually find the middle but uh, not on these coffee dyed papers okay so that's the mark less than four so it's going to be just right here barely past the two so those I should be able to do at the same time and same with this one I got that coffee up under my fingernail that's bugging me alright now if this all works out right I should be able to do both of these at the same time I think it sounded worse than it was. Alright, let's do this one. That thing is bugging me. Okay. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but um, they're coffee dyed, but I still want to dye the edges. <laughs> but I need just a little bit of ink in my ink pot. that sound better. But I'm going to leave it this way. Now, this is not going to be seen all the way, so I'm not going to go, but just down close to the bottom. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's do this one the same way. these I'll be inking all the way around. Okay. Well this one really got a dose of coffee, didn't it? <laughs> it's like super dark. Um, I remember watching a video. Man, I bet this was five or six years ago about this woman it was how she uh, did her papers to be really really dark um, and they were dark like this and I think she called them granny papers or something like that and um, she baked hers in the oven once she uh, dyed them in that made them a lot darker and I've done that before but I'm finding that if you let the coffee sit for a day or so and let a lot of it evaporate then it almost turns out darker than if you baked it in the oven okay let me move this 
see which ones of these how I want to arrange them. Now, is it just me, or did I totally... <laughs> uh, it was four and a half, wasn't it? Not four. My goodness. Okay, well, I'm not redoing it. This, this will just have to work. Alright, so let's find the spot to put these pockets. I want that to be at the bottom and I want this just enough inside of it so that it's covered there. So let's do that pencil mark and get her glue. And I've had the lid on and off of this all day, so I hope to goodness that it's uh, uh, not stopped up. Yay, it's not stopped up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not gluing the bottom. And the reason is, is if I glue the bottom, then... Um, let me put this down and so I can actually talk and concentrate at the same time. Does that look even? It sort of looks even. Let's check it out with this. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so what I was saying was when I put this pocket on, it will have glue across the bottom, and when I put something in there, it can be a little short thing. But I can put a tall thing in here, and instead of it being cut off at this point, it can go all the way to the bottom as well. So, that's what I am going to do there. Now, let's glue this one on. And like I said, this can go across the bottom. Like so. And then line it up with the bottom, line it up with the side. Make sure everything's as even it, oh, as it possibly can be. Well, the one good thing about not cutting it wide enough is I don't have to round that corner again. Okay, so there's that one. Now, let's see how good I am at eyeballing this one. Because... I'm going to try to line this up. Even with that one, and at the same distance away from this fold line. Well, that looks pretty close. Don't. Right, let's put this and see if that lines up. Hot dog. I'm going to call that a success. And put glue on this little side. And up and down through here. And put that there. And that there. And there's our pockets for the inside. Now, I know I can use some more music paper and that sort of thing, and I probably will do a little something, but I've got some stamps. I've got this one. I think I'll just put that as decoration on the back. That's what I'm thinking. 
I've got a um, stopwatch, or not a stopwatch, but a pocket watch. I've got some words here that I may or may not use. And then I've got this stamp that uh, sort of looks masculine. And then I've got some dictionary pages that has a violin. Um, the muskrat don't go on it, but right up here, up here is music, musician, and all that. So I'll use that part. And then I've got a man with a French horn. So I'll cut these out and use them, make something from them. Um, so I'm going to wait for that, uh, a little photo frame to get dry and then I will be back with the next part. So I've glued the uh, picture onto the back or technically I taped it on. Um, and before I actually glue it down I picked up uh, four bottles uh, four different colors of this uh, sugar metallic paint um, just to try it out to see if I liked it. This one is called Evergold and it's a metallic paint that has little grit in it that uh, I guess replicates sugar and I'm going to uh, just brush this very lightly with a few strokes of this goldish sugar paint just to give it a little bit of a shine to make it look a little bit more like a picture frame would look as opposed to just a flat piece of paper And it doesn't have to be completely uniform, but I want just enough on it to give it a little bit of a shine. So I'm just using very, very... Um, a thin layer that pretty much should be dry by the time I've gotten all the way around and then let me just add just a touch more right there there and that just puts a little bit of a sheen without going overboard. And I've got a little extra sugar on there, looks like. Um, you'll notice this is a different uh, paper. I'm not sure what happened to my other one, but when I went to put it on, it um, um, the paint um, had like not the paint, but the colors. I think I might have actually dripped a piece of alcohol or dripped some alcohol on it anyway. It, uh, I didn't like where it went, so I just printed another one and roughed this one up just a little bit with my fingernails. That's all these marks are, was just from my fingernails. So I'm going to put that aside and let it dry. And... So I was looking at some things I could put on here, and I made these the other day, uh, I don't know, last month sometime. These little tiny envelopes, uh, actually I, the, the video was on making these uh, label bases, but um, I, I made two that had these um, little... Uh, uh, like a belly band sort of and I had these little envelopes and so 
I thought that looks really cute. So, but before I glue it down, I'm going to take an extra sheet or the piece that I had from this page and I'm going to tear a little piece that will fit right inside there, I believe. Let's do it right along that line. And give it just a little bit of an ink. And then I'll fold it up a little bit. And see if it won't fit right inside that little envelope just as a little extra something okay oh, got some of that sugar paint <laughs> okay that probably should be dry which way do I want to do this I guess I need to kind of judge. Okay, that should work. Let's do that. And then that. Actually, I can go a little bit further because it's a little deeper and I would like it to peek out the top. Just a smidgen. But I still want the envelope to close, so hopefully that'll work. Let's give that a little bit of a ink, like so, and, and I'm going to crinkle it just a little bit. So it's a little bit warm. It's old music. <laughs> okay, let's pop that in there and see if it's going to work. It's a tight little envelope. Okay. Okay, there we go. I wonder how it would look if I turned it around. Yeah, I think I like that better. It shows up a little better. Then we're going to put that right in there. And then I thought about gluing it here. So, let me... And actually... I know it's already got one on the front, but I'm going to leave the top open. I could even leave that side open. I think I'll just leave the top open, then I can put another little bitty something in there, if I so choose, or remember. <laughs> Might be more a case of remembering than choosing. Alright, glue, come on. It's uh, being a little bit stubborn. Okay. Okay. Um, I was listening to, um, I was editing this video, the parts that I've already made. Uh, last night and I realized that I'm saying okay and so <laughs> so many times it's almost funny but when I get ready to start something new it's like okay let's go okay let's do this okay let's do that oh my goodness all right 
think I want to go around this one more time with an ink just a little bit make that line just a little bit thicker on that edge Yeah, that looks better. A little thicker and a little darker. Okay, I probably should not have turned my glue. It's almost empty and I'm trying to get the very last drop out of it. I mean, it's like a quarter full, but it's more air than it is glue at this point and so I could leave this side open to tuck something in the front I think I'll do that and if I end up not liking it I can just slip this little glue needle underneath and seal it but I believe believe I'm going to do that. But I am going to come down through here and give this one more line. Because that is a skinny little line of glue for sure. Alright. And I want this to sit down on the paper just a tad. Now, I'm going to put this to the side and put my handy dandy 10 or 12 pound iron, whatever it weighs, on it to hold it flat until the glue completely sets and now I want to figure out what I'm going to do here. We've got a violin on the front. And if I fold it this way, the uh, the paper's a little bit stronger. So that could become a little pocket, maybe. Or a tag. Here is a paper scrap. I'm thinking, and I'm thinking that I want to get rid of some of this white outline that I guess before I do that, I probably ought to glue things together, but I am going to get rid of that right on that line that I folded it. And let's run a little glue over that. Like so. And then tear this. Alright, 
I'm liking that so far. Now, I don't think, though, that uh, my corner punch would really punch through that really well, so I'm going to skip that part. And pencil, pencil. Gonna get a little trimmer doohickey over here. Yeah, I haven't bought me a new trimmer yet, but I'll probably will this weekend sometime. I just need a, I just want another paper trimmer that's uh, that works. So let's put a little ink around that. Well, one side's going to be glued down. I don't need that, do I? Put that like that. I need this little doohickey. Yeah, I've got to... Uh, I'm running low on my stash of of like bulk coffee dyed paper so I need to make me some more oh. sorta of. just come over that way slightly alright now let's hit this with just a little bit of ink and it can just be a little journaling card. Alright, now, while that's drying, this should be on there. I believe it is. Now, I think that's cute as a button. It is, it is. Now, I'm thinking of ripping up part of this paper and gluing it down one on either side. Put it this way. That's what I'm thinking of doing. So let's do a little more ripping. And that's a French horn. And the French horn is here. Okay, so that means I can to about there. Rip off a little more. Right. And then I'm going to take off that word frenzy. I don't want this to be look like it's frenzied. There's a frenetic, a frantic person. Unfortunately, it's really close to to French horn. But I need to take off a little bit more anyway. So we're going to do that. 
that. And this. An idea on the width here. So let's go right there. Pull this up and hopefully not break it in the process, but oops, just a little bit. Alright, I'm going to ink the edges. Well, I'm going to try to ink the edges. <laughs> the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch this corner. A little bit in this one. I'll leave the other two intact because they're going to be in the inside and if things are going to get bounced and moved and banged up then they'll be more toward the outside of the page I would think. Now let's just hit this with a few Okay. Now. now I might actually glue glue I mean I'll be gluing it down flat, which will take the wrinkles out of it, but the look of the wrinkle should still be there. I can get this to cooperate. Okay. So. Yeah, see, there was the so. I just realized it was in my own little thing. I think I might just take that little bit down, yeah, down a smidgen. Get rid of this muskrat. Muskrat love. There's a song somewhere about muskrat love. Okay. And that's what this reminds me of for some reason or other. Alright, the muskrat has disappeared. And, 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 there's that. Now I want to make sure that I don't hit that again. So, I go just inside that line slightly that I just made. And I'm going to tear that corner and that corner a little bit. 
be it. This time I'm going to ink it first and then mod it up. And see if which one works better. I'm going to say this one works better already, but we'll see. darkening all over those lines. In fact, I'm liking that. It looks, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. Let's glue this one. Okay, so I went looking through my stash, there's the word okay again, and I found this that I had completely forgot about um, that I picked up in a thrift store oh, at least two years ago, if not longer, but it's all music related. So we've got these little sheets like this. that would just be perfect in here. Of course, there's way too many to use them all. Oh yeah, got to have that one. I think that one, give it some color a little bit. Might do that one. <laughs> I have a granddaughter named Annalie. It's a little bit spelled differently, but yeah, that's cute. <laughs> well, I could put that one in. I won't do that one or that one. Three little kittens lost their mittens. Yep. And the sackless march. Okay. Let me turn these back over. I didn't do any little, little ones, or did I? Not much. Okay. Let's see what we've got now. And okay, the first thing I want to do is find one to go in this little pocket that I put here. So I'm thinking a little one like that. Maybe. That's, I have to turn it that way, I think. Now, let me check just how wide did I make that pocket. 
If I fold it in two, will it work? I believe it will. But which one do I actually want? I'm only going to put one in. I like this one better. Now, the question is, is do I ink this? But if I just put them in the way they are, they're going to look brand new. So I think I want to scrunch them just a little bit. And put just a smidgen of ink around the edges. It's funny, I have some of these uh, images, these music sheets, this one and this one. I have downloaded from the public domain uh, where you can find them as raw files. Uh, but this works out pretty good. I'm going to put just a little bit across like that. it up just a touch. Now let's fold it. It'll probably take a little bit of the... No, I don't want to ink the fold because I don't want to put ink in the middle of the picture. Do it this way. Actually. Okay, that works, and that works. Now, I might end up gluing that on the back and making a pocket out of it. Yep, I think that's what I will do. So we will glue it. down as soon as the glue comes out. I think it must be getting dry in there or something. It sure does not want to come out. It's like you have to white knuckle squeeze it to get it to come out. Okay, I got interrupted. Uh, and it's been a few hours, so I'm not sure exactly where I was, but I think I was um, putting this ephemera. Oh, I remember what I was doing. I was going to glue this onto the back of this um, folder. That's what I was doing. And my husband came home with toys for the grandkids. And uh, so when he pulled in, uh, I was ready to pause the camera, but then he was like, come look at this, come look at this. So, uh, so the little ones, um, well, sort of little ones, um, one of them will be three in like a week and a half. Um, but they're all, there's there's three of them, they're, they're four, about to turn three in like a year and a quarter. And they're all very uh, tall for their age. The four-year-old looks like he's six. The th soon to be three-year-old looks like she's four. I mean, they're just tall. I think I'm just going to fold this in half. I'm not going to ink this because I don't think it would be seen enough. But maybe I could crinkle it a little. I don't know. I could try inking it. And see. 
Uh, I guess it shows up a little bit of stain. Sort of. But not enough to... Well, there's a little something. Maybe I do it that way. Just to make it look a little bit older and not so fresh out of the printing facility. Yeah. Okay. We'll call that done. And I suppose if you want to replicate this basically as far as the, the actual project um, it's just a piece of a file folder and I just kind of choose a theme um, to to represent whoever's on the cover I do like how that turned out um, and then just kind of go from there a little, little bit. And yes, we, we can ink or distress. Maybe distress is a better word, at least for this part. Because some things are inked, but then some things are more distressed. At least that's kind of the goal. And by the time you sort of smooth it back out a little bit, it's taken on a few characteristics of being distressed. Makes it look like it's a, been through a little bit of something instead of. Uh, prim, proper, and flat. So yeah, my husband and I, we, between us, we have nine grandchildren. Technically, technically, we have 13. But two are in England, and two are elsewhere. So. Now we're going to fold this. over here and this. If it's going to fit, that's going to be a little tight, but I believe it will go. Tell you what, let's see if we can ease that open just a tiny, tiny bit. Sometimes if you just um, pull right next to your glue line where it's kind of seeped out, then you can make, stretch that pocket out just a little bit and push that dry glue back just enough so that things can go in and out just a little bit more smoothly. Oh yeah, much better. So here's where, um, what I was saying earlier about not putting glue in the very bottom of this one uh, wins out because I was able to put that pretty far down. Um, that one is already yellow, but I dare say we make it a little bit brown-ish. bit of this uh, 
coffee stain on it. And age it up a little bit. Make, uh, I've got the last count I did, it, it was 60 something thousand. I don't remember exactly how many, but now a lot of those are not, won't, will never be used. They're just texts and stuff. But I've got about 64, 65,000 uh, public domain images that I have downloaded over the last six to seven years, maybe longer actually, to make ephemera from. Okay. And like I was saying earlier, there's a few of these that I've got. And if I don't have them, I've seen them before. Right. Let's put this right here. And I may pull out one more big one actually to uh, put these in because these are kind of fragile little little papers. It'd be nice if they had been printed on something just a little bit more substantial. But you just have to go with what you got sometimes. Right. I think I'll no, I'm going to fold it because otherwise it covers too much of the white one. So we're going to put this one right here. Like so. Now I'm going to go through this again and find a bigger one. That's maybe got a little bit of color to it. I don't really like that one. I don't really like the color, but I think I'll do this one well. Ugh. Oh, here we go. His favorite flower. We'll go with his favorite flower. How's that? <laughs> I do like it. I could put it on this side. Just like that. I think I'll do that. I'll crunch it up and put it with that one. Okay. One thing at a time. Because I think that's probably all I can do. <laughs> Is one thing at a time. Franklin. Turn it over this way. We'll do the same thing. We will grunge up this village choir. All right. 
that. Not too bad. Not too bad. But I don't know, should I do this one? It's definitely more colorful, but I really don't want the purple. The purple, you know, his picture is sort of purpley with that sepia color. I guess I'll go for it. I will fold it this way. And before I even start, I'm just going to go ahead and just make sure that everything is a little bit Um, looser so that it can go in. Now this paper's thin and it okay it's well right, let's pull that back out it can go all the way to the bottom so the key is you don't want to break through of course but you just want to um, just lighten that uh, glue just enough to work that through. Go. Look at that. I'm going to leave that just like that. I think that looks cute with that C right there. I'm going to put this one back in here, which will cover up that C, but that's okay. I'm going to pull this one up a little bit. Put that one like that. I believe we're almost done. We're as done as I'm going to be with this particular project. I'm glad I found these. I, I have little ephemera boxes kind of stashed. Not well, not stashed. They're in an orderly fashion on my shelving um, with sort of like stuff together, but um, I've forgotten about this so it certainly saves the day. Let's put that put that away. And put that that away. Um, I would like for it to be seen just a little bit more than that. Wonder how that would work. Ta-da! We're gonna do it that way. How's that? All right. So what we've got is Mr. Somebody. I'd ha I'd have no idea. I mean, I read his name, his actual name, but I couldn't tell you know what that was either. So um, we've got. Um, a cover picture. It looks like it has acetate on it, but it doesn't. Um, that's just the glossy uh, paper that I used. They're semi-glossy. Uh, in a frame, some music, music paper, um, all these little music ephemeras, a little tiny envelope with this little piece of uh, music paper inside. I think that's cute as a button. I'm going to make some more of these little bitty envelopes. And this sort of thing. I just love that idea. 
this envelope. I don't know if you can see. It's got a little boy and girl, or two little boys. Two little girls. It's got two little girls on it. And that was a piece of a 6x6. Six six. Um, and then we've got the music in here. All these music things. Oh, I was going to do some stamping. I almost forgot. Let's go back. Get my ink over here. Um, let's flip this over here. I don't know if this is official from the post office, but I found it in an antique store. So I'm using it. But I don't know exactly where to put it. I don't want to put it on the front, so I'm going to put it right up here on the back. It goes this way. It'd be awful if I put it upside down. There, how's that? So we got that. Um, some of these are not really going to apply in the same way. I could put a portion of that, but I really would rather have. The, uh, the watch here. Okay, that looks good. And I'm not going to do the uh, text since I've put that all in here. Like here. But... Dare I use a word? I like the word passion because people who do music, I grew up in a musical family and I know some of them definitely have passion for it, but I don't know if that, I think, or explore, but explore's a little too something else. I don't know now if that is all I want to do or if I want to do some of this handwriting but only do like the top of it and put that there. I think I will do that. And I realize this ink pad thing probably is off camera. But it's the one that uh, has come loose from the bottom and I don't want it falling out on my white tablecloth here. Alright, that sort of does what I'm looking for. I'm going to put that right back like that. Squish that down just a tad more. And over this way. Okay, I'm going to call that done. Yeah, I forgot about the stamping and just happened to look over that way. Okay, so what I was saying was we've got a picture and now a word, a, time, a, a, a pocket watch. My great grandpa wore a pocket watch. A um, little envelope with a music thing some music ephemera inside. I could put another word in here. Music is created, isn't it? Put that. There we go. Yep. Music is created. And
and then on the back we have do not bend and then a portion of some handwriting and some more little so this is um, my document holder I have no idea what I'm going to call it uh, exactly um, and I have the other one here so it turned out kind of cute um, alrighty then so that's it for this project I hope you enjoyed um, this kind of long drawn out process but uh, it's totally new to me uh, I love the idea of it and so I just gotta um, hone my skill a little bit more I think uh, and uh, get uh, get all of get everything together that that, so that it's cohesive and not thrown together. That's the main thing. I want, I want it to be cohesive. But thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in another video very soon.